Hey friends, so for this Maya exercise, we are going to create our first composition. We're gonna add some textures, a camera, a light, and render it. Let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a polygon cube using my default settings. I'm gonna scale it up using that shortcut R to activate the scale tool, W to move it over, and then I'm going to use my first shortcut, which is Command and D to duplicate the cube. I could also press Shift and click on one of these arrows to duplicate the cube as well. And then finally, for this third cube, I'm going to smooth it by going to Mesh and Smooth. I'm gonna turn on my wireframe on Shaded so I can see all my vertices and edges. I'm going to use my modeling toolkit to select by vertices and then click and drag to grab all these top vertices and scale it flat. So I'm making my first cylinder. Do the same thing with the bottom vertices. Use that top scale to scale it in one direction and then grab these center vertices and then scale them in. And finally, since this is my cylinder, I'm gonna use the multi-cut tool, hold down control click and drag and click and drag to um, create holding edges for the cylinder. So it looks a little bit more like a cylinder. Okay, so now I'm just going to go back to object select, shift and drag on one of those arrows to clone. All right, next cube, I'm going to smooth this one too and just press the number three to the shortcut for smooth preview and just scale it up. So now I have my basic tools. So I'm gonna do maybe create one more cube by pressing shift and clicking on that arrow to clone it. And then finally, I'm going to scale up this cube by using my one direction, so Scale is R, use the one direction scale to scale it up. And then I'm gonna use this floating plane, the two direction scale to scale it down. So I have kind of like a twizzle stick. And now I can take all of these pieces and lay them out into a composition. So um, I'm just going to speed this up quite a bit. It's going to be a lot of moving back and forth between move, rotate, and scale. So the faster you get accustomed to those shortcuts, the faster you'll be able to switch back and forth between all of the different tools. And then I'm using my rotate tool to rotate a couple of these at a time. I just wanna give them a feel of more randomness. All right, so I'm just, again, pressing shift and clicking on the arrows to clone these pieces and then just move them around. Scale them for a little bit more randomness and it's looking good. So the next thing I wanna do is add a texture. So my texture is going to be using a color palette that I found on Canva. I highly recommend um, using a color palette but the Canva color palette only gives me the hex code. So that pounds F7 number right there is a hex code and I need to convert it to hue saturation value. So that's HSV. So what I'm doing is taking that hex code from the number, uh, from the picture. And then here I can see the HSV number that I'm going to need. So now I'm kind of getting ahead of myself because before I do that, I need to create a material that is going to have that color. So first I'm just gonna select a few objects. Then I'm going to right click an empty space and select assign a new material. So click on that. And the shader we're going to be using to start is a Lambert. And now your shader will appear in your attribute editor and I want you to rename it so you know exactly what it is. And a Lambert um, does not have any um, shininess at all to it. If you do want to change, eventually you can select the type there. But for now, let's just use a nice Lambert. 
Now for the color picker, it's a little odd. You need to double click on it in order to open up this um, color picker window. You can see you can input numeric numbers down at the bottom with the HSV, and that's where those numbers will come in. You can also select RGB and then do a scale of 0 to 255. Those are the web colors that we're used to. Color is really important in everything that you do, um, so definitely take the time to use a palette and get it right. So you can see my HSV is 351 and then two percentages. Now remember that a percentage is like I has decimal points in it. So I'm going to use the first one, which is my hue. So that's 351. The saturation is 100%. So that's the equivalent of one. And then the value is 97%. And that's the equivalent of 0.97. So you can see once I input those numbers and click done, I've got my color. So now I'm going to do that a few more times. I'm going to speed this up a tiny bit. So same process for this one. I'm just going to choose white. It's a lot easier. So right click, assign a new material, Lambert, call it white, select just a white color. And that one's done. Next one, I'm going to do marmalade. So input the hex value. Notice the HSV 23195. So I'm just going to grab, so remember shift and click to select multiple objects. Assign a new material. So 23, 1 for 100, and 95, oops, if you put just straight 95, it's going to give you a crazy value, but if you put 0.95, that's when you'll get the correct value. Click done. And then the last one is orange juice, so I'm going to do the same process. So 40, 99, 98. Assign a new material, Lambert, rename it, change the color by double clicking on that window. And remember to hit the done button at the bottom. Okay, so I forgot to include all these other pieces with this color. So no problem, I'm just going to select these pieces again right click and assign an existing material. And this is where labeling all your colors comes in because I can just super easily apply that material to them. And actually now that I want to make a few changes to my colors, I can do the same thing. Select a few more, right click and assign an existing material. Please don't make a new material over and over again. It's going to clutter what's called our hypershade. Instead, I really want you to use your existing materials and just reapply them. So I'm just gonna do that, assign existing material, and looks pretty darn good. So now that I'm happy with this, I'm gonna show you how to add a light and um, render them. So the first thing we're going to do is create a camera for our render, so create camera, and then you can double click on the outliner and call it shot cam, all capitals. And then if you go to your panels perspective and switch to that shot cam, and I'm gonna press F to focus what I've done um, so I can see my camera. This will be the camera that I use to render. I'm also going to use what's called a resolution gate. It's this tiny little button there, but it's basically showing me exactly what this shot camera is gonna show when it renders. And it's super useful. Please use the resolution gate button. And then it's time to render. So I'm going to click this tiny little button. So not the render view, but the one that says IPR on it. Really, really tiny letters, IPR. And what it does is it's an interactive photorealistic renderer. And this is a preview of what's in our scene. Now notice that it's completely black. And that's because we don't have a light in that scene. So to add a light, I'm gonna go back to, or up to my Arnold menu, go down to lights and select our first light, which is the sky dome light. So now if you zoom back, you'll see that the sky dome light is a just a big dome around your model. 
And if I click that IPR button again, it's going to show me a preview of my scene. Now notice one thing, there's not a lot of shadows or light bounces on here except between the objects. So to get those extra shadows, we really need to add a ground plane and a plane in the back. So this tiny little plane button on the left um, is going to help us get some light bounces and get more realism in our scene. So I just want you to click on that plane. Oh, one more thing, sorry. Notice that I am in my shot cam, so I wanna undo the view change I just did um, and go back to my perspective camera. So now I can work in my perspective mode and then just keep that shot cam for only when I'm going to render. So I'm gonna apply just that white to the ground plane. I'm gonna rotate it, or duplicate it and rotate it around to give myself like a back and then just position it behind my scene. So now I can go back again to my shot cam and click IPR. And now you can see I'm getting some really nice shadows underneath the objects and on the back plane as well. And that's also going to create some bounced light in my scene and make it look a lot more realistic and cool. So definitely add a ground plane now we are ready to start rendering. The first time you render in Maya, it's going to take quite a few steps to get it nice and set up. So the first setting we need to change is under the file menu, save image and click on this tiny square option box. You want to make sure your save mode is set to color managed. Later on, if you have problems with your color in your pictures, it's probably this color managed setting. Next, to actually um, change our render settings, we're going to go to this little clapperboard with like a gear in front of it. That's your render settings. And under the common tab, there's a few things we need to change. So first is our image format. We want to change to JPEG. We're going to scroll down our renderable camera will be our shot cam. And then our image size. So right now it's set to HD 540, which is actually quite small, but you can easily change it to HD 1080. Or if your computer's struggling a bit, you can do HD 720. Notice that for image size, you have a ton of different options, everything from square images, 4K square, to these HD, which is um, more the cinematic um, layout. And then finally, let's go to our Arnold Renderer tab. So the Arnold Renderer is um, interactive and photorealistic. There's a bunch of different options here. Um, because we don't have any specular in our scene, that means shininess, I'm going to turn that to zero. I'm going to turn my transmission to zero and my subsurface sampling to zero. What I am going to do is a fun trick called adaptive sampling. So now what this does is tells Maya, use your own algorithm to apply more render, more camera samples to the places you find important and less camera samples to the places that Maya does not find important. It improves the quality of the render and depending on your other settings, it can speed it up or slow down the timing of the render. When your settings are good, you're going to go up to render, render again, and then pick your shot cam. And this will start the rendering process. My render time took about 12 minutes, so it does take some time to get a nice looking render. The last thing you want to do is go up to file and save image and make sure you're saving your file. So I'm saving this with my name and what it is and um, a number on the end of it. Make sure that you are saving as a JPEG or a PNG file type. 
Maya's default file type is alias pix, which is not as easily usable. And that's it, you're all done. All right, hope you enjoyed this exercise. Let me know if you have any questions.